Hey, I'm Srini, the creator of Maximize Your Outpost with Mem. Have you ever found yourself staring at a blank page with writer's block setting in, with your ideas and research scattered all over the place, making you feel completely disorganized and overwhelmed? If you're nodding along, then you're in the right place, because in this video, I'm going to explore how Mem can revolutionize your writing process. We'll dive into how it can help you overcome writer's block, organize your thoughts, and streamline your creative process. So if you're ready to transform your scattered ideas into a polished piece of writing faster than you ever thought possible, stick around. Now, let's get to the video. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you the organizational power of MEM when you combine a bunch of different features together. Uh, one is just the basic note-taking functions, then using collections, and then basically combining all of those using bidirectional links. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to basically create an outline for a hypothetical article that I want to write. And so the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to start by creating a new mem titled The Power of Network Thinking for Nonfiction Writers. Now, one of the really great things about mem is that we can actually create links while we're writing something else if we wanted to just by putting the at symbol in front of it. And you'll see here it gives you an option to either make that a collection or a new mem or alternatively, you could just press new note and put the power of network thinking there. So now we've got it already linked to our outline here. So we're going to go ahead and change this to an H1. And one of the great things about MEM also is its AI features. And what I love about MEM's AI features is the fact that it draws from your entire knowledge base. So every note you have will be incorporated into this process. And so you can actually train it to sound more and more like you. Uh, in addition to that, it really makes all of your knowledge much more useful and allows you to make use of every note you've ever taken, uh, every book you've ever read, transcripts, whatever it might be. Your knowledge just becomes far more valuable when it is put inside of this network structure. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go over how this is incredibly beneficial for writers. Now, typically, one of the first things that we do when we write is outline. And the great thing about MEM is it has Smart Write and Edit, which is its AI feature. So what we're going to do is we're going to say generate an outline for a blog post with five headers. And the great thing about Smart Write is that it will actually generate this outline for us. So now we have a starting point. So we're not just starting from a blank page. And not only that, if we wanted to, we could actually use MemChat to find different notes that might actually make sense for this, which actually takes us into the next step. So you can see here now we've got a really basic outline and this mem becomes the backbone of our entire article. And the interesting thing here is that a lot of these ideas here are actually notes that I already have inside of mem because of the fact that I've taken a lot of notes on network thought. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a collection where we curate a bunch of different notes together. And the beauty of collections is that it allows you to add things to a particular thing that you're working on without necessarily having to link it to this particular note. So this is where the real power lies in the ability to work like this, especially as writers. Typically, what we think we would do is we have to focus on going in the order of the outline. And the reality is that that's actually not how we think. Ideas don't come to us in sort of this neatly assembled order. So even if, for example, we had this entire outline uh, set up, and let's say that the first thought that came to mind was this right here. I could actually work on the last step before I worked on the other steps, and I could still basically write the article in a nonlinear order because of the fact that I can just put these things back together. You can think of each note as a puzzle piece, and then you can put the puzzle back together in the order of the outline, but you don't actually have to work in the order of the outline, which is what makes this so powerful and so much more efficient than the traditional sort of hierarchical way of going through an outline step by step. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a couple of different notes. I have a ton of notes already on network thinking, so I'm going to just see what we have. I'm going to basically bring in some stuff. Okay, so memories are triggered by cues. And you can see here that some of these things are actually inside of the outline already. And so I'm going to go ahead and say that, you know, brain is not a network, is a network, not a hierarchy. Um, so I have a ton of notes that we can add. So what we're going to do is we're just going to keep uh, adding different notes here. And I'm just going to do a search for network thinking. So there's another one there. And a lot of this is already things that I have inside of an existing article. And this is the exact process that I used to write that article. And it took me about two weeks. But the great thing about this is that 
you can actually work at a much more reasonable pace than you would say if you were trying to do this in a linear order. So you can do just a tiny little bit every day. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take each of the different notes that I have. There's only about five or six different notes here inside of this collection. So what we're going to do now that we have all of these notes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a collection and we'll add each of those notes to the collection. So collections are really just a fancy way of saying tags, but when you use them in mem, the great thing is not only will you see all the notes that are in that collection, but mem will even recommend additional notes that you should add to that collection. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a new collection and we're just going to call it networked thinking nonfiction writers. And you can see here that it actually is already even suggesting notes. One of the notes is already suggested based on the way that this has all been set up is the fact that, you know, we actually have the title here, so we can go ahead and add that. We'll go ahead and add that. And you can see here that I have a bunch of different notes on network thought. And so I'm just going to add all of these. And then what we can do is then we can go back to our outline for the blog post that we're working on. So if we go back to this outline and one of the other things you'll see here is that I'm able to seamlessly navigate between any piece of information that I need to access without necessarily having to leave mem, which ends up being a huge time saver because of the fact that it reduces context shifts dramatically. So we're going to go ahead and add this to our network thinking for nonfiction writers collection. We are going to go ahead and add this one as well. And since this is in our network thinking for nonfiction writers collection, you'll see here that we have all the different notes that we could potentially use in this article, as well as a bunch of other notes that we might consider using. So now we have all these different notes that we've put together, and you can see here that a few of them are already here. But what I'm going to do is add one more. And so some of these notes might have nothing in them, which is another cool thing about mem that even though you are creating notes, you can often just create placeholders. You can see here, network thinking is the engine for slow productivity. This is something that has nothing in it, even though it was an idea that I came up with while writing smart notes on Cal Newport's book, uh, Slow Productivity. So you can see here I have another one as well. So now what we can actually do, rather than starting from scratch or starting with a blank page and starting with an outline, let's say that we wanted to bring all of these together into this particular mem. What we can do is we can then just start to assemble all of it here. And then basically a good amount of the foundation of the article is already done. So what we're doing is we're basically taking all these puzzle pieces. And the thing is that right now they're not in any particular order. They're just kind of whatever it is that I have here uh, in terms of notes. But the beautiful thing about this is now based on our outline, what we can do is we can start to assemble the article. So as a result of this, what ends up happening is we actually end up not having to spend as much time looking for things. We can work in a nonlinear way. And basically whenever an idea occurs to you, you can focus just on that idea. And each of these ideas could be then added to the collection that we created for this article. So we go back to our demonstration step here and we switch back to this mem. You can see that we've basically done a couple of things here. We started with the outline by creating the main mem, and that is this idea for a blog post. The next thing that we did was we created a collection and we added a bunch of different notes to it. Now, the other thing we could do is, let's say that you're just going about your day, you have an idea, and you want to write about it, instead of having to necessarily add the bidirectional links, you can just add it to the collection and keep going. And while we're using writing as an example in this video, you can do this for client projects too, because as we all know, projects tend to compound in terms of the amount of information as the project evolves. So one of the things this allows you to do is to keep everything related to a particular project connected without necessarily having to add every single thing related to the project to the page for that project until you're ready to do this. So for example, even if I didn't necessarily have all these links here, I have the collections so I can just click on them and add them when I know I've finally written out all of the different ideas 
that I want to put into this article. So you can see here that we have a good amount of writing already done. Now, obviously this in its exact format is going to have to change to fit the format of the article, because what ends up happening when you work this way is you'll spend a lot of time writing and you can kind of write freely, but when you're ready to put together a finished piece, so much of the initial foundational writing is already done. And this is especially useful when you learn how to take smart notes, because you're rewriting a lot of things in your own words. So instead of starting straight up from a blank page and trying to write everything in one go, like you might, if you were to follow this outline here, you can just work in whatever order you want to go in. And it's funny because one of the things that it actually suggested in the outline is this idea that your structure has to be linear, but your process doesn't. And this is something that I learned that completely changed my ability to write because a lot of people, when they make the transition from doing things like blogging to writing books, they struggle because of the fact that they're used to being able to go back and forth between topics. And now they have to write about a single topic for over 200 pages. And so when you realize that your structure has to be linear, but your process doesn't, it basically unlocks your creativity and frees you up to write just as ideas come to you, because then you can put them back together in an order that makes sense. So just because we have an outline that is written this way, it doesn't necessarily mean that we actually have to follow the outline. In fact, writing an outline to write is really sort of a kind of ridiculous way to go about it, mainly because it conflicts with the way that we think and the way that we organize information in our brains. But most of us are so used to that because of the fact that this is how we've done things our entire lives. So this initially feels somewhat uncomfortable, but as you get used to it, you start to realize that it's so much more effective simply because of the fact that you're able to generate and capture so much knowledge. And it doesn't matter if you don't end up using it or if you use it in this article, you can still use it in another article. Uh, so basically the idea is that there's literally nothing inside of mem that becomes useless. And one of the articles I most recently published on my blog was a result of just searching through the knowledge base. When I wrote one note, it surfaced another note. And that's the other thing you'll see here that works really well inside of mem things like similar mems, which is powered by memx based on the content of whatever is in here, it will actually surface those. So let's go back to the outline here again, and you'll see here that we have similar to this mem and you'll see there's a bunch of stuff related to network thinking that maybe I didn't add to my collection, uh, or that might actually end up being useful inside of this article. And that's without even linking it or adding tags. So you have a combination of multiple things happening here. You have collections, which are your tags. You have bi-directional links, which allow you to connect multiple notes together. But then you also have Memex's similar Mems feature, which works associatively. So based on the content that is in this note, it will suggest things that are in other notes that might be useful for this article. So as a result, you end up with this much more streamlined creative process. So just to recap the steps, the first thing you're going to do whatever it is, in this case, like I said, we used writing an article is you're going to create the main mem. Then what you want to do is you want to create a collection as it relates to that project, whether it's an article or project, something that you're working on. And then what you're going to do with time is you're going to just keep adding notes. And then eventually you're going to interconnect a bunch of different ideas using bi-directional links where you put it all together. The other thing that's great about this is with this split screen, you can click on a note while working in another one. So you can see what's in it, figure out if it's useful. And if it's not just close it. So unlike a folder structure where you're having to like dig deeper and go into folders and subfolders and files, you literally are able to click on a link just the way you would on the internet and go back and close it if you didn't. So as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below.